Hi there, Scorpio. Welcome to your end of January 2024 general tarot update. It's Rena here. Let's see. Okay. I think I got, is this two cards? I guess it's just one card. These are very thick cards. That's your card, <laughs> Scorpio. So right off the bat, we get your card. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> An inheritance gone wrong? I don't know. Great. All right. Interesting. I just did your uh, forecast for February. And I, I would say that starting in January, in the last half of January, we have the, the uh, situation of Sun and Pluto going both going into Aquarius on the same day. Pluto is one of your rulers. So it holds an important part of what makes you a Scorpio and it can impact you greatly. And it's going into the fourth house of home and family. Actually, this is the second time that it's gone into Aquarius and there'll be one more rodeo where it goes into Aquarius again after being in Capricorn uh, later this year. But for it, uh, over 20 years, it's going to stay in your fourth house. So this isn't going anywhere. And it's going to be like, you have to face the past. You have to deal with um, things that happen. Um, so we have here as a death card, the central theme of this time. Oh, yes, of course, it could be somebody. This is something that would have already been something that you're dealing with at this time. So it could be a physical death if you have lost a loved one, but it can, and even if the person wasn't a loved one, sometimes somebody dies and they, maybe they abused you and you feel mixed feelings because it's like all of a sudden this nemesis, this person that you may have blamed for every bad thing in your life is no longer in the building. So what do you do when that happens? Do you feel this sense of like, um, can you appreciate what that means to you in the, the large, bigger picture that maybe there was some sort of reason that you had to experience certain things? Um, and you can let that person go knowing that that isn't, it isn't up for you to decide what happens. So yeah, death can be a very tricky thing. It can be very complicated. We can have, and, but it can't, this might not be a physical death. It might just be like you're, um, letting go of something in your life or, uh, you've ended a phase, a cycle in your life. In the past position, we have the page of wands. This can be good news. Um, I could see somebody like a Scorpio, and usually I don't think of Scorpios as having affairs. Maybe it's an emotional affair where you realize your marriage is over with, and that's the death card. And part in part, this is because somebody has come along who makes you feel very alive. You know, the wands are excitement and passion. And maybe you're talking to that person and you're having these wonderful conversations. Or maybe it's gone beyond that and you're having an affair. And I don't take that lightly, but it is what it is. I'm just the messenger here. 
Um, so I got this in the reverse position. The Ten of Pentacles upright can be a card of like, um, it, well, it's an, an inheritance card. So this kind of makes me think of, you know, finding out you get an inheritance and then somebody pulls a rug out from under you for some reason. Because the Page of Wands, that could be good news. Not that, you know, you're celebrating a death, but because of that. And then you find out that you were cut out of the will or you were given just kind of a token amount. Um, and then that sets off a whole new set of issues that you're dealing with. And um, same with, like, even with, a, a, like, a marriage that goes south, if you're contemplating leaving your partner, you may face a different status, economic status. And it's like, what price is your happiness? If you're not happy where you are, are you willing to forego some of the material side of things? The card that um, crosses you is the Nine of Wands. You can see the weary expression on her face. She's guarding the gates. And she's kind of anticipating that somebody's going to try to breach the, the gates. This is a card of boundaries or needing to have boundaries because something is not quite um, as it should be and you are deciding to change things. So I could see like also with any kind of, for some reason, stepmother came into my mind. So it would be any kind of family member though that you don't get along with that you don't trust what will they do next that might be what that nine of wands is saying it's like you're kind of anticipating yet more dirty tricks or just general unpleasantness from another person and if you're already dealing with the loss of someone you may be it, that's not something that you really want to deal with so it can feel very uh, uncomfortable. By the way, this is the second reading where I notice I have my uh, quarters <laughs> that I have on the table. If only you could see the totality of this table, you'd see that it's not as <laughs> uh, free from stuff on it that you might think. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's very interesting. Scorpios are already kind of you tend to be kind of suspicious, so you might be on high alert as it is. What's coming in is the Ten of Cups, so this is a nice change of pace. The last two cards make me think that all's well that ends well. This is a card of family harmony, the pot at the end of the rainbow. So it really does suggest the number 10 is the end of a cycle that it, we have the Ten of Pentacles kind of like turned upside down. but the 10 can be, I think 10s are associated with family. I'm not entirely sure, but um, they must be because they're featured in both of these. But this idea of anything like tearing you apart from others might be kind of like exaggerated that really ultimately it's going to work out, whatever is going on. It may feel messy while it's happening in the newness of the situation, but I feel that you're going to get everything sorted out. And this includes if you do feel that your marriage is over with, um, and I'm talking about a commitment part, a committed partnership, because back in November you had, or uh, late October, you had a lunar eclipse in Taurus. And so that occurred in your seventh house of committed partnerships. So some of you may be dealing with the aftermath of whatever that may have uh, brought on for you. And there's some weariness 
and weariness. Weariness is being tired. Weary is being a little bit, um, you know, suspicious about some, some situation. A lot of people confuse the two, but you might be both. But the Ten of Cups suggests that everything will, you know, settle down to what, you know, and give you the ending, the happy ending that you're looking for. Uh, <laughs> I won't make any jokes about that. Okay. And the outcome is the Ace of Cups. This is new love. This can be, uh, you know, an offer of love coming from somebody else, but beginning stages of it. Maybe if it's with somebody that you're already with, in some cases, it could be a renewal of love. If somebody has gone through a hard time, maybe even some people get divorced and they get remarried. So that has happened as well. But it's the last two car, uh, cards are the water element that you represent. So it's like getting back to your center, whatever has happened that represents the death card and being able to um, open your heart to, to trust people and to experience that soul connection that heartfelt connection. All right. That's what I have for you, Scorpio. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I'm primarily an astrologer. I have some package deals and standalone readings. You can find out more information at the link below. I'm at rainandmoonastrology.com. Bye.